All right, let's dive right in, shall we? Today, we're tackling Giovanni Gentile. Oh, excellent choice. His work is truly fascinating. Yeah, we're looking at his Theory of Mind is Pure Act, specifically Chapter 2, Spiritual Reality. Sounds a bit spooky, right? Well, it's not about ghosts, if that's what you mean. Okay, good, because I was a little worried there for a second. It's really about how we experience things like, you know, ideas, concepts, even language itself. Right, right. The stuff we think with but never really think about. Exactly. And Gentile really pushes us to rethink how we understand knowing in this uh, this more abstract realm. Okay, so like when I say I know something, could be a historical fact, could be a philosophical idea, what's actually going on in my mind according to Gentile? So he'd say that real understanding, especially of these more complex ideas, isn't passive. Meaning? It's not like your mind is this empty container just waiting to be filled up with information. Okay, I can see that. Instead, he says you're you're actively absorbing knowledge. Like it's it's almost it's almost becoming a part of you. Hmm. So it's less about like memorizing a fact and more about like internalizing an idea, letting it actually change how you see things. Precisely. Think of it like this. Imagine you're learning to bake a cake, right? Okay, I love cake. You could read recipes all day long, but until you actually get your hands dirty, mix those ingredients, feel the dough, you don't truly understand the process. Yeah, you just have the theory of the cake, not the cake itself. Right. And for Gentile, grasping this spiritual reality, it's similar. It's about actually engaging with ideas, letting them letting them transform your understanding. That's a fantastic analogy. So it's not just knowing the ingredients of an idea, but actually experiencing that process of like putting them together, making it real for yourself. Exactly. And this leads us to another really fascinating concept that Gentile explores, the interconnectedness of minds. Wait, hold on. Is he saying that we're all like secretly linked up? Some kind of hive mind situation? Uh-huh. Not quite a literal hive mind, no. Okay, good to know. Because mm -hmm. that's both kind of cool and kind of creepy. His point is more that even when we think about other people's thoughts, we're still engaging with them within our own consciousness, you know? Hmm. So there's no way to fully step outside my own mind and perfectly experience, like, what someone else is thinking. Exactly. Gentile really emphasizes the difference between what he calls the empirical ego and the transcendental ego. All right, break those down for me. Empirical ego, that's like our everyday self. Yeah. So that's you experiencing the world through your senses with your unique memories, your desires. That me, that feels distinct. Okay, got it. What about this transcendental ego? That's a mouthful. Think of it like this. Have you ever had a moment, maybe meditating or something, where you just, you feel this sense of oneness with everything? Uh, maybe. I'm not the most Zen person, to be honest. Well, Gentile would say those moments, those are glimpses of the transcendental ego, a deeper, more fundamental I that's, that's connected to something much larger. So there's a whole other level of me that's less about my individual experiences and more about connecting to something bigger. Yeah, that's how Gentile sees it. It's a challenging idea, but it's crucial to understanding his theory. And speaking of things that connect us, let's talk about language. Right. Because, I mean, how else are we even having this conversation about these abstract ideas, if not through language? Exactly. And for Gentile, language is way more than just a tool for communication. He sees it as this dynamic force constantly being shaped and reshaped through our thought, through our expressions. So not a static thing we just use, but something that we're also actively creating as we go. Exactly. He loved this quote from the linguist Wilhelm von Humboldt. Humboldt said that language is not a finished product, an ergon, but an activity, an energia. So instead of language being like a dictionary definition, yeah. it's more like a like a musical performance, constantly unfolding, creating meaning in the moment. That's a fantastic way to put it. Just like music comes alive in the performance, language comes alive in the act of speaking, writing, even thinking. So our minds are actively involved in making meaning with language, not just passively receiving it. Like, we're all composers in the symphony of communication. Exactly. And this active, constructive aspect of language, it's essential to understanding how we build knowledge, how we come to understand anything at all. And this is where another thinker comes in, Giambattista Vico. Right. Hit me with some Vico wisdom. Who was this guy? So Vico was this brilliant 18th century Italian philosopher. And he had this incredible, really powerful idea. Vico's big idea, it can kind of be summed up in this Latin phrase. Are you ready for this? Hit me with it. I've always wanted to know more Latin. Okay, so it's verum et factum convertuntur. All right, so I'm guessing that means something super profound, but... Yeah. 
going to need a translation. Yeah, yeah. No, you got it. It means the true and the made are convertible. Catchy, right? Okay, so break that down for me. What's that actually mean? Basically, Vico, he believed that we only really, truly understand something when we can, like, mentally recreate its creation in our minds. Interesting. So, like, it's the difference between, say, just admiring a cake. Yeah. And actually knowing how to bake that cake yourself. Exactly. You got it. You hit the nail on the head. I can appreciate a delicious cake for sure. But, yeah, once I've gone through the steps of baking it, I'm like, okay, I get it now. I have a different relationship to it. Exactly. And Gentile he takes this idea and he applies it to this whole realm of spiritual reality. It's not just about passive observation. It's about active construction. Okay, so how does that work in practice with like grappling with an idea? So instead of just, you know, reading Gentiles theories, you'd really want to be like actively wrestling with them in your own mind, like trying to rebuild his ideas from the ground up. Huh, interesting. So it's like the more I actively try to understand it, the closer I get to that that true understanding Gentile and Vico are talking about. Exactly. You're not just taking in information, you're you're processing it, internalizing it. And and this also ties back into language being this active force. Okay, yeah, I see that. We don't just use language, we shape language. Right. And by by articulating an idea like we're doing now, we make it more real for ourselves. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah, actually. Whenever I try to explain something complicated to someone else, I end up understanding it better myself. It's like in the act of explaining it, things click into place in my own mind. Exactly, because you're you're actively engaging with the ideas. You're shaping them into something you can share. And in doing so, you're solidifying your own grasp on them. Now, this might have you wondering about, well, reality itself. It does. If our minds are so actively involved in shaping how we understand things, is there even such a thing as like an objective reality out there? separate from us. Oh, yeah, you're going deep now. That is the million dollar question. Right, right. right. Gentile, he didn't shy away from this at all. Okay, good. Because I was worried we were heading into some serious philosophical crisis here. He acknowledged that, yes, there's obviously a physical world out there, but our experience of it, he'd say, it's always filtered through our senses, our thoughts, even our interpretations. So like a tree might exist objectively, but my experience of that tree, the way I see its colors, maybe the memories it evokes, that's all happening within my own consciousness, not out there in the world. You got it. It's like we each experience the world through this unique lens, you know, yeah. shaped by our own individual experiences or perspectives. So no two people have the exact same experience of reality. Right. Which is kind of mind blowing when you think about it. But it's not to say there's no shared reality, just that we each access and understand it through our own like subjective filters. That's a really fascinating way to think about it. It's like that saying, we don't see the world as it is, we see the world as we are. Exactly. Our perception is always influenced by who we are, how we understand the world. And and for Gentile, this subjective experience, this constant process of making meaning, this is at the heart of what he called spiritual reality. So not some mystical realm, but more like yeah. the way our minds make sense of things. Yeah, think of it as the world of thoughts, beliefs, values, interpretations. It's where we as humans grapple with big questions, connect with each other, create meaning in our lives. Like our own internal universe. I like that. And Gentile really believed that embracing this active role we have, you know, this active role in shaping our understanding, that's what makes for a meaningful life. That's really cool. But there's one more piece of Gentile's thinking I want to make sure we touch on before we wrap up here. This whole concept of the transcendental eye. Oh, yeah. That's a big thing. It feels like a pretty crucial part of his theory. We touched on it a little bit earlier, but I'd love to dive a little deeper. Absolutely, yeah. The transcendental eye is where Gentile gets really, really interesting. Remember when we were talking earlier about the uh, the empirical ego versus the transcendental ego? Yeah, like the difference between my everyday self, just yeah. going about my business, yeah. and those kind of rare moments where I might feel this this really deep sense of connection to everything around me. Exactly. Those moments, those are like little glimpses of the transcendental ego, according to Gentile. And he believed that this this deeper I, it's not bound by our individual like day to day experiences in the same way. It's this it's this unifying force. Well, the transcendental ego is kind of like a bridge between our individual consciousness and a more universal 
reality, something bigger than ourselves. That's a great way to put it. It's like tapping into a level of awareness that goes beyond our own little bubbles. And for Gentile, connecting with this transcendental eye, that's a major key to unlocking a much deeper understanding, not only of ourselves, but of the world around us. So this transcendental eye, it's not like I can just snap my fingers and suddenly I'm connected to this higher plane of existence, right? Right, ha uh ha. -huh. No magic button, unfortunately. No, <laughs> that would be pretty handy, though. Right. But Gentile, he believed that when we actively engage in the process of seeking knowledge. Okay, so like reading, learning, debating. Exactly. When we really push ourselves to think critically, to connect with different perspectives, different ideas, he thought that's part of what helps to awaken that transcendental eye. Huh. So it's not about achieving some kind of static state of enlightenment, but more about the ongoing pursuit of knowledge itself. You got it. It's a constant process, always evolving, just like that energia we were talking about with language, you know, challenging ourselves, questioning our assumptions, expanding our understanding, not just of ourselves, but of the world around us, other people, and and fostering that empathy, that connection, recognizing our, our shared humanity. That's a really powerful idea. It's like, it's not just about you know, individual enlightenment. It's about trying to build a more connected, a more compassionate world. Exactly. Now, before we wrap up our deep dive into Gentile, I want to leave you with one key takeaway, if that's all right. Absolutely. Lay it on me. Don't shy away from those challenging ideas. Embrace that struggle of really grappling with, with complex concepts. Yeah, I can be guilty of wanting to avoid anything too mentally taxing. Right. But Gentile would say it's in those moments when we're pushing ourselves, getting out of our intellectual comfort zone, that's where we often do the most growing. That's a great point. It's so easy to just stick with what we already know, what we're comfortable with. But real learning, real growth, it happens when we're willing to wrestle with those new ideas, even the ones that make our brains hurt a little bit. Exactly. And in the spirit of Gentile, remember, you're not just this passive recipient of information. Engage with it, you know? Question it, analyze it, make it your own. That's where the real magic happens. I love that. All right, to all our listeners out there, keep those minds churning, keep those questions coming, and we'll catch you next time for another deep dive.